Okay, so I've got our stock here for X floated end. And I've got my drawing. Now, you don't really have to have this drawing. If you did the tracing, then the measurements that you need basically are already on here. Uh, the stock. I'm using a piece of three-quarter inch. Uh, it's four inches wide, and I need a piece three inches long. So I just took my porter band and cut me a piece off. Uh, if you don't have a porter band saw or a band saw or any means to cut this off, uh, you can order your stock. Most of the people on eBay, uh, if you go to um, eBay and order your stock, those guys will cut this for you. Uh, you can buy a 12 inch piece and then have them cut four, uh, four pieces three inches long. And that, that may charge you a buck or so to uh, cut it. But if you don't have a porter band, then uh, they'll cut it for you. When I first did my CNC, uh, CNC conversion on the X2, I didn't have any machinery. So I just I had to make do with what I had. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this edge up and square these four sides and then we're going to lay this out. Alright, so I'm out at the mill and I've got the vise mounted into the on the table here. I had to grind down the heads of those bolts that came with the vise to fit into the T-slot. A few things you're going to need. If you don't own any manual tooling then you want to be kind of careful of what you're going to buy because once you see and see this machine you're probably not going to use uh, this very much you're going to be using a few end mills you can buy an end mill set that's all 3 8 shanked and it'll go from an eighth of an inch up to a half inch and you can get it with the 3 3 8 inch shank and you can just get one single R8 end mill holder that holds a 3 8 inch shank That'll get you by for a lot of uh, the manual machining. You can invest in an R8 ER32 collet and a set of collets. That way you can use various different sizes of end mills. Uh, and you're going to need a boring bar holder and a set of boring bar bits to do uh, the machining. This fits in here and allows you to do uh, bigger diameter holes. And that's going to be for your bearing, uh, the holes for your bearings. Um, this ER32, I used this for a long time before I went with my uh, TTS power draw bar. So this is a good investment to go with because you can easily change out different size bits and it makes it a little bit quicker uh, so I have my stock mounted in the vise here and I'm just going to use the mill to clean up these edges here I'm just going to lower this down with the fine adjustment about 25,000 about splitting the line okay Let's see, we're right about on the line here, and uh, pretty nice finish for the bottom of a worn out half inch end mill. But uh, we'll take a measurement on that and we'll see what we've got. Okay, so I'm gonna, <clears throat> what I've done is I flipped the block over and I just wanna hit the bottom just a little bit. Alright, 
it looks good all right so we've got this dimension now down to three inches now what I'm do I've got this side and this side I'm just gonna hit these edges with a file just to get these burrs off and uh, then we'll go take it into the shop and we'll lay out these we'll lay out the uh, dimensions all right so I took our piece and I have colored it with a magic marker uh, you can use layout die if you happen to have some but if you don't magic marker works good then I transferred all my measurements and I just used a sharpened nail you can use a scratch all and just mark I just basically marked these four holes and the center location of the main hole here uh, I just marked these four holes and then the center location of this hole right here and the two corners uh, so what I'm going to do for first is just draw these four holes and then drill a hole but it's not going to go all the way through for the bearing mount and then we're going to bore the hole for the bearing all right so let me get the meal set up okay so I've got my first hole lined up I've got my drill chuck in the mill it's I've got a center drill in here and I'm just going to use the quill and just make a center drill mark then I'm going to come back and drill through with a quarter inch drill bit um, probably what I'll do is I'll drill this I'll raise the z-axis up without moving the X and Y insert the drill bit and then make sure that I get in the same hole. Uh, I've got the Precision Matthews on one and high. I'm not exactly sure uh, what speed that is. Let's see, one, H1 is about 600 RPMs. mention this enough but make sure you wear safety glasses I use these safety glasses because they have actually have reading glasses here at the bottom and I can't see up close so I'm always pretty sure I've got mine on because I can't see without them and if you wear glasses then you don't really have to worry about it either because you'll have yours on but for those of you with good eyesight Please wear safety glasses. I know too many people that's had injuries. From, get, you don't want a piece of metal to get up in your eye, believe me. All right. Get this uh, switched off. This is actually a H. You can use the 9 30 seconds. Um, it's a little bit bigger than a quarter inch. And the bolt is actually a little bit less than quarter inch. So this will give you some room. All right, here we go. Just a little alcohol squirt for a little lubrication there and to cool it off a little bit. Um, all right, that's great. Now the bolts I'm going to be using are M6 by 25 millimeters uh, with a one millimeter pitch and they're actually going to be countersunk flush. 
Okay, so what I've got in here now is a a bit from my 3 8 inch boring bar set. And I just found one that would give me a diameter big enough for the head of my screw to go in. And this is about 0.45 of an inch. And I'm going to, hopefully, I'm going to see if I can use the same one right here. Otherwise, I'll have to turn the heads of these screws down and use the 3 8 inch uh, end mill to make that countersink. Okay, so now that I have this whole board, I'm just going to go move over and repeat this three steps. I'm going to center drill, bore, and make a countersink for the other three holes. Then we'll flip it over and we'll put our two pin holes in and bore out for our bearing. So I don't want to bore you to death, but I'm just going to move down and start boring these other holes. Okay, I'm doing the last countersink with the last uh, bolt head here. Now this is about, what I really need is about a 10 millimeter hole, uh, but I don't have a 10 millimeter end mill. Uh, 3 8 is a little bit too small. And I, what I actually did was I just found a boring bar that would work. And this one is just a little bit, a little bit too small. But if I use the one that I use for these holes, it would come out the side here. And I don't want to do that. So what I'll do is I'll use this one and then I'll just turn the head down just slightly on the lathe. And then I'll, these two bolts will fit right in. Uh, when you're doing this, you can make your block a little wider if you want. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower my quill down to the top of the stock. Then I'm going to zero out my DRO. And then that way I'll be able to go down. I need to go down uh, 23 hundredths. Once I get... to go down the other all right let's see how that does one nice little feature about this precision Matthews is this quill uh, this fine down adjustment and the DRO there Oh, yeah, it won't go in there because of the, I need to turn these down a little bit on the lay, but they're just starting to go in, so I think it'll be okay. So now I have these four holes. I'm going to go turn down a couple of bolt heads here, and uh, we'll come back. Okay, so I just went to my lathe and uh, just turned the head down a little bit. So that it drops in the hole and you can see it's flush. All right, like so. And then that takes care of that. Now I know you're going to say, well, I don't have a lathe. Well, that just means it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but you can just take and roll this around on a grinder if you want and uh, get it small enough to fit in there or start off with a, a bit that's a little bit bigger that won't come off the edge right there so now that we have these four holes those are going to mount to the end I'm going to just flip this over I need to do the two pins and bore for the bearing block remember this is going to be mounted this is the outside edge and so the bearing needs to be on the inside. Okay, so I've got the piece flipped over and I've marked my two holes here for my pins. And then I've marked the center of my bearing. 
and I'm just going to center drill and then this is a 15 60 fourths uh, it's about 5.8 millimeter hole I believe the pinholes are six millimeters so th this may be a little under if so that's good uh, because I want to be able to drill through the this block into the metal the steel casting and kind of line things up hopefully uh, I'll be really close right there but I'm just going to center drill and then bore those holes That's a half inch. For my pinhole there, I'll just repeat and on the other side, and then we'll set up for the big hole. So thanks for watching the video. Please feel free to comment if you have any questions. Thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe, and most importantly, be safe.